Happy Sunday evening, everybody. I went live a couple minutes early to make sure everything was working. <laughs> I'm in a different room, so hopefully everything will work okay. So hopefully you're hearing me. And um, if, we, if you can hear me okay, make sure you say something. You know, um, type to me and say that you can hear me all right. Oh, we're getting some thumbs up. That's good. Okay. Woo. Got, we're having all kinds of people coming in. Yay. Hi, everybody. So, yeah, so I'm in my living room. Um, this is where my... <laughs> this is where my uh, long arm used to be. And um, so I had, when I put my long arm in my sewing room, I had to do, you know, make some changes. So my cutting table with all my cutting machines and like, you know, all that kind of stuff is all in my living room now. So we're going to try it in here and see how this goes. <laughs> Hopefully everything will be okay. Um, you may hear the furnace run. I'm sitting very close to my furnace. I live in a mobile home. So, you know, the furnace is like next to my head over here. <laughs> so hopefully it won't be too distracting because it probably will run. Everybody's hearing me okay? Oh, good. Hi, everybody. Boy, there's a bunch of you already in here already. So how's everybody's Sunday going? Oh, yep, Maria's here. Jackie's here. All kinds of people are here. So I was really looking forward to this class, and I had a little bit of a setback last night. Um, I was heading home, and I called my dad, and I could tell he didn't feel well. So um, I ended up in Anamosa taking him to the emergency room last night, and um, he is home. He's fine, um, but <laughs> it was... Um, a little exciting and I've had about three hours of sleep so if I stammer a little bit you know why <laughs> so when we get done tonight I'm going to bed <laughs> so oh yeah Denise I saw that you were sewing again that's awesome you're get, getting stuff put away hi everybody boy there's a bunch of you in here already so anyway I I came home from Anamosa this afternoon um, and dad's doing okay. He's tired too, cause he hasn't slept much either. And, uh, so anyway, he's, <laughs> he's at home resting in his chair and watching TV and I'm going to teach a class. So, um, tonight we're going to do the glitter ornaments. This is like one of my favorite things to do, um, at Christmas time. And I've made a lot of these ornaments and I haven't taught this for a while. So some of you may have taken a class over the last, you know, period of years. I don't know how long it's been since I've taught one of these. But um, hi, Shannon. But the, the scan and cut is really fun. And when I learned to use um, adhesive vinyl, this is one of the first things I actually did was to make Christmas ornaments with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut adhesive vinyl on the machine, and then we're going to apply it onto an ornament. But when, I, when I've taught this in the past, I've never really taught everybody or shown everybody how I actually glitter the ornaments, because I usually have them all glittered, you know, for the class. So I thought, well, tonight, since, you know, it, it's, it won't take very long to do this, I will show you how I actually glitter these things too. And it's a little bit on the messy side. I, I have glitter everywhere in my house when I do this. And I um, glittered one right before I came on and then I promptly dropped it and broke it all over the table. So, so now I have glitter all over the table and pieces of glass. <laughs> so um, you will see kind of a mess on the back of my table, but you know, that it, stuff like that happens. It's live TV, right? <laughs> So um, anyway, I'm going to show you how I do the actual glittering on these. And, and then, oh, hi, Marsha. Hello. And um, I'll show you how I actually glitter these then so you know what, how you get them ready to put the vinyl on them. And um, you can do lots of different colors and so on and so forth. But I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to do green tonight. I did some red ones before. And then I'll do I'll probably put the glitter uh, or the vinyl on a red one uh, because the greens 
I like to let them dry completely so that I can put the little tops on the ornaments before I put glitter, before I put the vinyl on them. Because otherwise, um, the little, you know, the little prongs that go down inside, inside the ornament, they kind of scratch the glitter if it's not good and dry. So I usually let them dry overnight before I actually, um, before I actually put any vinyl on them. Um, so we won't put the vinyl on the green one tonight. It'll be on a, one of the red ones that I did last week. So, um, but I'll, but I'll talk a little bit more about that as I turn my camera around. So, so, oh my gosh, we got like 30 people here, guys. Thanks for coming and, and spending the evening with me. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, these are really fun to do. And, um, I know a lot of you are, um, kind of sometimes struggle with your scan and cuts, but the scan and cut, um, is really fun. And this is something that is a really cool project. So I have, um, the one we're going to do tonight is deck the halls. So we're going to do this. And I ta I've taught this in a class, but it's been some time ago. I haven't taught this for a long, quite a long time. And this is the one we're going to do tonight. I just, this is like my favorite ornament. And um, it's really fun to cut. It is a little bit, you have to be a little careful when you're taking, you know, you're weeding it. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the, um, these ornaments, these square ones are really, really nice. Hi, Judy. Um, are really, really nice to um, use for putting vinyl because they're flat. And I would highly recommend, especially when you're beginning with the vinyl and wanting to do ornaments, don't buy the little teeny tiny little round ones. <laughs> yeah, we'll be showing you the glitter, Deanne. <laughs> Um, but don't try those little tiny round ones because it's very hard to get the, the vinyl on them. And we're going to actually do a little something with those later on in December. But um, these flat ones work really well. And then there's another shape that's kind of a, it's a round one, but it's kind of flat on, on each side. And those are really easy to glitter. So pick something that's not quite so round when you're trying to do the vinyl on them because it's just easier to get it on. So um Okay. Oh, hi, Barb. So anyway, we're going to make deck the halls tonight and I'm going to show you first how to glitter the ornament. And then I'm going to show you how to, I've got a graphic that everybody's going to get after the class. I will upload it and you'll get a graphic so that you can scan this into your scan and cut. You can trace it in the scan and cut, and then you can cut it in the scan and cut without any use of the computer. So we're just going to do this with the, the machine itself with the scanning function. It's a very good, um, it's a very, it has a very good tracing function, so it works very well. Okay. Oh, hi, Clara. So anyway, we're going to make deck the halls first. So I'm going to turn the camera around. And we'll have to do a little bit of manipulating with the camera tonight because I've got kind of a big table here. And we're going to first glitter an ornament. So let me get this turned around here. I'm sorry. All right. So here's the items you need to glitter these ornaments. Um, you need... Your, your clear ornament like this. And this, now mine are glass. I prefer glass ornaments because they're usually much prettier when they're glittered. Um, if you have children, of course, in the house and you're concerned about breaking them, um, you can use the acrylic ones and they have those too. I prefer the, square, the, the glass because they don't usually have as many flaws in them as the um, acrylic ones do. So anyway, these are glass. These are the square ones. Now I get these, let me show you the box. I get these at Hobby Lobby. They're the only ones that I know that have these, they call them cube ornaments. So here's the box. It says clear glass cube ornaments. I think they're 50% off right now. I picked up a couple boxes last week. And you could put this on some other ornament, but I like this. This one just works really well because it's kind of a square design and it works real well on these square ones. So I think I've, you know, I paid, I got two boxes for $6.99. So, okay. So those are from Hobby Lobby. And then the other thing you need is um, you'll need a little measuring cup. And I just have a measuring cup that I only use for this. And then the stuff we're going to put inside the ornament is called Minwax water-based polycrylic. And you're going to find this in the, um, like the paint department. 
I get mine at Walmart. Um, you, I know there's other places that have it, but it's in the it's usually in the paint department. And I usually get the clear gloss. You can get the satin gloss, whichever works. It all works. It's about the same. I don't really notice any difference in the way they look. So this one happens to be clear gloss that I have here. You can get these great big cans, um, or you can get a smaller can if you don't think you're going to do too many. I usually buy the big ones because I'm always like, I used to do these for the craft show. And then, you know, I do hundreds. I mean, I glitter hundreds of ornaments. And there was just glitter everywhere in my house. So anyway, um, I haven't glittered any ornaments for a couple of uh, Christmases. So it was kind of fun to do this. So, okay. Now, we're going to take our ornament. And we're going to pour the Minwax. Hopefully you can see me okay. We're going to pour this Minwax. That's why I like these little measuring cups. We're going to pour this into the ornament. Through the top, I took the little, you know, I took the little holder thing off, and I'm going to pour it into the ornament. And then I found that the best way to get a nice even coating of this stuff is to kind of turn it and swirl it and work your way up with the Minwax, and you get a nice even coat on it. Some people like to shake them. I don't find that works as well with these. And then what I do is I get my little cup over here again and I slowly work it up to the top and then I, I want it to drain. So they need to be pretty drained before we glitter them because if they're kind of drippy, they will, um, second here, see if you have any comments that I need to answer. Um, if they're too drippy, that the glitter will not stick to it. It'll just wash away. So the trick is to use, to let these dry a little bit. So what I did is I actually glittered one. I hope it's not too dry now because I had a problem with the computer. So I glittered one, or I, I put the min wax in this one. So hopefully it's not too dry. If not, we'll let this one dry for a minute and then we'll use this one. And with these square ones, can you see that they're kind of, um, they're you know they're kind of square on the edges, so you have to kind of tip it side to side to get the edges off. So I have these little cups over here, and I I just I just cut off little plastic cups that I have in the house, and I like to leave them sitting on their end like this, so that they can drip for a little bit. So we'll try this one and see if it's too dry. I was going to glitter both of them, and then I broke one, so I was busy cleaning instead of, you know, uh, glittering the second one, so sorry about that. Um, and what you need then is called, you need extra fine glitter. The, the bigger, fatter glitter doesn't cover as well, and it doesn't stick as well, so you want this real fine stuff. And you can get this at, I get this at Hobby Lobby. They have tons of colors. Um, you know, and I like, I did red and green just because those are my two favorites. They have a really pretty light blue that's beautiful. And then I'll show you a couple of other ones because I have a couple surprises for you at the end. So I'll show you a couple of other colors that I did. But we're going to take this um, glitter. Let's see if this one will work over here. This is the one I glittered earlier. Or I, I put the Minwax in earlier. So let's see if this works. And if it's a little goopy around the top, I have just a wet paper towel that I dab it off. And then I have these teeny tiny little funnels. And I think I got these at Hobby Lobby too. They're pretty small. And I'm just going to put that inside the ornament. And then I'm going to pour my glitter in. You want a generous amount because we can use it again later. So I, I poured it in. And I'm going to kind of get, get it out of the rest of the funnel. And then I do the same thing with these. When I glitter, I like to swirl it and turn it like this until I get close to the top. Okay. And then I have a dry paper towel over here. And I'm going to hold it over the end and I'm going to shake it. So I do shake the glitter, but I don't like to shake the polycrylic because it seems like it gets it all over the place. But the glitter, you got to shake it to get it evenly coated. Okay. So then I'm going to take a look at it and see how I did. Actually, this one looks really good. So it looks like it's nice and evenly coated. Okay. Now there's still some glitter in here, so we can use that again. So I'm just going to take that little cup 
and I'm going to dump the rest of the extra glitter and I'll tap it. We don't want all that extra glitter in there. Yeah, I've really never bought any glitter before I started doing these. Now I have like hundreds of colors, I think. So there's, you can see there's still quite a bit in there. So I try to get as much of it out as I can. So there's not like a bunch floating around in there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now remember, these are glass. So you don't want to hit them too hard. And um, the plastic ones do quite well. Normally the plastic ones, though, have funny dimples on the bottom. And that's why I don't really like the plastic ones. But if you have a lot of little kids in the house, you probably will need to use the plastic acrylic ones. So, okay. So there is a glittered ornament. So what do you think? That wasn't very hard. This min wax, this polycrylic, oh my gosh, this is like the best stuff. I've tried, um, they have an actual glitter stuff. I can't even think what it's called now. And I tried that. Oh my gosh, that stuff is so runny and it's so messy. Can you use plastic ornaments? Yes, Deanne, you can. If you have kids and you're worried about them breaking, just use, you can use plastic ones and they don't, they don't have maybe as many shapes in the plastic ones, but they work fine. They're not quite as pretty as the glass ones. I think the glass ones have a nicer sheen on them. But if you have a lot of little kids, the plastic ones would be safer for them. So, and, I, and I've done acrylic ones. I don't happen to have any right now that I've glittered, but I've done them and they look fine. So, all right, whoops, second here. Cool, not, yeah, <laughs> it is kind of cool. So I'm gonna do this one. I'm trying to get the rest of the drips out of the second one that I did. So I'll, I'll glitter another one for you. And you can, you know, these can sit for a little bit. It's okay. It won't hurt them if they sit like that. The one I just did had been sitting for about 15 minutes. So it was okay. It doesn't dry quite that quick. So, okay. So I think I've got most of the drips out of it. Because you just don't want it to be real, real goopy in there. So, and then I'll take my wet paper towel and go along the top so it doesn't drip all over. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my, take my funnel. And pour, and like I said, pour ample glitter in. Don't be a word. You're gonna you're gonna dump it back out again. But if you have lots in there, you get, you know you're gonna get it coated well. Oops, second here. Yes, I would say Hobby Lobby will have a run on their glass ornaments tomorrow. <laughs> and they are they were 50% off the other day. I don't know if they still are. I assume they probably are 40 or 50% off. So I'm gonna twirl it. So you want, whoops, I want to twirl it till I get towards the top and then I'm going to put my paper towel over the end and then I'm going to shake it. Oh, now this one, I think, whoops, I might have missed, just missed. I've got glitter all over the place, so don't mind me. That's why I have, you, you notice that I have a piece of, I have a garbage bag down on my table. Then you can just pick up all the glitter and uh, not have to vacuum too much. So I usually do pretty good with it. All right. When I was doing these for craft shows, I would have like a whole table, my whole cutting table be covered in, you know, in uh, garbage bags <laughs> and I'd be doing this. So sometimes I did hundreds. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip this upside down and I'm gonna dump the rest of the glitter out. Now, um, Michael's also has um, nice size. So one of the, the ornaments that I show you in a little bit, one of your surprises, I actually get those, to, um, ornaments at Michael's because Michael's has a different size than Hobby Lobby does. So um, those kind of roundish ones that I told you that are kind of flat on the side. So hi, Connie. Um, they they have like a little teeny one in, at Hobby Lobby and then a great big one. And then Michael's has one that's in between. And I really like that in between sized one. So I do buy those at Michael's. And Michael's had more acrylic ones for those of you who are needing the plastic ones for like kids. Okay, so we got this one all glittered. What do you think? That one looks pretty good too. I like the green. This green, I think I got this on clearance last Christmas at um, Hobby Lobby because they had some like little baggies of it. And oh my gosh, it's such, it's so br brilliant green. I really like it. Okay, so there, there is the glittering. 
after they dry, I always leave them open like this. You know, I leave the tops off. So hopefully, hopefully you can still hear me okay. My furnace just turned on. Um, I leave these open like this because I want to make sure they get good and dry. So I just lay them. You can see I have it laying up here in the box. And I just leave them laying open in the box like that until they dry. And I normally dry them overnight. But then when I'm done, you know, they have these little, you know, these little metal things that pull, pull out. And then I put them back in. But if you put them in when they're wet, you'll see a scar on both sides where the little, the little um, metal clasps go in and then they'll scratch it. So it's better to let it dry well before you put them back in. Okay. So that is the glittering portion of the class. I had never really taught anybody about this before, so I thought maybe I'd glitter them so you can see. What I do then is, you know, here's my lip, my my can, and I'm just going to pour this back in here so it won't get dry on us while we're working on the rest part. So I'll just pour it in here. And then I wash this cup out, but I only use it for Minwax. I just have this cup and I wash it out, but I just use it for the Minwax. And then these little cups... See, I've got a little bit of um, Minwax in there. But um, this one I notice has some glitter on it, so I don't want to pour that back in the can. So, yeah, this one has some glitter in it, too. So I don't think I'll pour that back in the can. But I, well, this one's okay, so I'll put this one back in there. And then I just get a bunch of these little cups. Now, I did, I did actually um, cut the tops off so that they were um, shorter, and then they work real well for the little ornaments to set on. The round ones particularly set well in them. Um, otherwise, I lean them against the can or a bo some boxes or something. So, okay. So there is the glittering portion of the class. So now we're ready, since we have our ornaments glittered, in a second I'm going to pull this up so I won't have glitter all over the floor. Um, then we're ready to put the vinyl on them. And there's so much fun to do this. So um, if you give me a second, I'm going to have to move my camera over so you can see. My table's kind of long, so I need to move this camera over. Give me a second here. Hopefully I don't make anybody sick. I thought it'd be easier if I put the camera on the side over here. If I can get it to tighten back up again. Oops, going the wrong way. I'm surprised I'm still awake. I got to bed about two, slept for about an hour and a half, and then Dad was up and down all night, so I wasn't really, <laughs> I wasn't really uh, sleeping very much. So okay. So now we're back to our scanning cut. So give me a second. I want to move my computer around here too, so I can see your comments. Okay, so this is our ornament that we're going to put this on, this blank one. And the first way, the first thing we have to do is we have to scan. Whoops, how about we turn on the machine? I had it on, but it likes to go to sleep. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scan a picture. Because we I have this picture of this deck the halls. And I'm going to give you this graphic. I just printed it off on my regular printer, and it was a little black and white graphic I found online somewhere. And we have to scan this first. So just a second, I dropped all the glitter on the scanning mat. Let's see if I can get a little bit of it off. Otherwise, we'll have glitter in our scan. There we go. Okay, so this is a scanning mat. You can put this design on a regular sticky mat this you know this is our regular sticky mat the standard mat but i like my scanning mat because then it doesn't um it doesn't yeah sorry i've got glitter all over it um it doesn't then stick in case i i have a nice piece of pattern or something here this is just a little flipper that flips up like this and then it holds the design in place the piece of paper. So I use this most of the time when I'm scanning. They have a 12 by 12 um, mat, and they also have a 12 by 24 scanning mat. So it is really handy, and that's what I do most of my scanning in. Okay, so we've got our graphic in there. I just printed it out on a regular piece of paper, and I'm going to load this into my machine. 
So I have to pull my camera back a little bit so you can see this loading part. Now, I'm very, very careful loading my mats. Um, these new, this is the, the Scan and Cut DX225. Um, the new machines are a little bit more uh, particular about how you load the mats. And so I've always been very careful about loading mats anyway. And all of them need to be loaded really this way. So you can see there's rollers here. I'm going to bump this hoop or this mat right up to those wheels. And I'm going to lay my hand down on the front, right in front of this roller, so that I'm holding this mat nice and flat against the bed of the machine. Okay. Then I'm going to take my other hand, and up here, I'm going to tip the camera just a little bit. There's a button on the machine that looks like a mat, and that is the loading button. So I'm going to hold this down with this hand, and I'm going to push the button with the other one. And I'm just going to guide it in so that it doesn't go sideways. That was the only problem that a few people had when, when the new machines came out is because the old machines were a little bit more forgiving about the loading. And so they allowed you to be a little lazy with your loading. But these machines really do need you to put your hand. And this is actually the correct way to load a mat. You lay your hand down in front of the roller and then hold it flat against the bed of the machine and then touch the mat, the loading mat. Okay? So now we have our scanning mat in here with our graphic. And I'm going to get a little closer so you can see what I'm going to do on the screen. And I think you're going to be able to see. I often have problems seeing the scan and cut screen, but I've got it high enough. I think you'll be able to see it okay. All right. So what we're going to do then with this picture is we're going to scan it. So I'm going to touch the scanning button. And there's different ways to scan on the machine. You can do direct cut which means that I would scan this picture and I would cut out the picture out of this, this piece of paper. That is not what I want to do because I'm going to cut this out of vinyl. So what I want to choose is scan to cut data because I'm going to scan it and then I'm going to cut it out of something else. So I'm going to choose a second button. And then it tells me that my scan area is 12 by 12. I think it's 12, it says 12 by 18, but make sure, let me make sure I have my mat correct. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Let's go in and look at the little, see the little um, wrench here? And it says scan area is 12 by 18. I don't believe that. So let me check to make sure I have the right mat chosen. 12 by 12 is what I want. So I had the wrong mat chosen. So it actually probably would have said when I tried to load it again or tried to use it, it was it would say it was the wrong mat. So I need a 12 by 12 and that's what the size we want. So I'm going to hit OK. And I use that, I touch that little button, the little wrench, and that helps me set my settings. OK. So then I also noticed, did you also notice that there was an option for black and white or color? Um, this is, since this is black and white, it would just be black and white. The color ones will actually read layers. So like if you have a color picture that has like three colors, it'll think of it as three layers for the, for the cutting. So um, this particular one is black and white, so I'm going to choose black and white. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I am ready to scan. So I'm going to hit the Start button. And it says the scanner lever to position two. The new machines have this little lever. It's on the right-hand side. You can see my hand over here. It's over here on the, on the when you're looking at it, it's on the left, but it's on the right-hand side of the machine. Make sure it's on the number two, which is up. Okay, and then I'm going to hit start. I'm going to pull this ahead just a little bit so it doesn't hit my lamp back there. So it's scanning. Okay, so it's scanned, and now it, on the screen it says that it is recognizing. So it has to think for a minute when it does this. And then this screen, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer. There we go. Um, this screen has the tracing buttons on it. 
So I've got tracing just around the outside edge, tracing inside and outside, and tracing intersection. Now, I've only used the first two buttons. I'm sure there's a reason you would use this, the third one, but I've never used that one. But this deck, the halls, has, you know, like lines on the outside and on the inside because there's like letters that have lines that would be inside. So we're going to choose the second one. So it will trace around everything for us. So I'm going to touch that button. And now we need to do some cropping because as, as you can see, there's a, there's a big line down here. Well, we really don't want that to cut. It's actually the, like the bottom piece of the paper. And I noticed there's some little polka dots too because I had green glitter that, that broke on my mat. <laughs> so there is a little bit of glitter on it too. So you can crop it by using these little arrows and I'm going to pull this up. like that close to the design so I might crop out most of the mess that I don't want okay there's a couple of other buttons on here this button here allows you to adjust how well or like how strong it it um, it traces and most of the time the default setting is okay I don't I don't change that very often and then this next piece the ignore object site is actually kind of neat because if you've got something that, let's say, I had some stuff I was doing and I had shapes, but then I had these words that were like hanging off on the side and they kept scanning and I didn't want them to. So if I make this bigger here, it would, it would not, it, it was going to stop tracing those little tiny little things. Like in this case, it was words. So that I have used that occasionally if I have some stuff on the scanning picture that is like really small but really shouldn't be there and this that's what you use this for so we're not going to use that tonight because we're okay this tonight and then i'm going to hit okay because i'm actually pretty happy with this and then you're going to choose where you're going to save it because remember we're not going to cut this piece of paper out we're going to cut it out of vinyl so I'm just going to save it in my machine. Okay, I'm just going to hit the button and that looks like the sewing machine. And then I'm going to note when it saves in the machine, it doesn't give you a name of a file. If you name it like in some software like Canvas, then it will give you, you can put a name there, but this just has a number. So I'm just going to note my number here. And that's the one I'm going to choose when I go to find my design later. So we'll hit okay. And we're done with this section. So to get out of this, I'm just gonna hit the little house button over here and hit okay again. And now we're back to the main screen, okay? So does anybody have any questions about the scanning part? Is this making sense to everybody? Now, if you have the DX650, what I did is almost identical, but your screen may be slightly different. I think, I think you'll be able to tell what's going on from this. When we do some editing in a minute, the editing is slightly different on the, the, the DX. And I just didn't, or the 650, I should say. I did not get my 650 out, but I think you'll be able to figure it out because this one is actually, um, they're both very similar, but the button that you need to press for editing looks different. And I'll kind of explain what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to take this mat out now. I'm going to push this back. And I'm just going to hit that same button that I did before and take it out. So now I'm done with this mat. So I'm just going to set it aside over here. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to cut our vinyl. And this particular vinyl, um, we're going to talk a minute about vinyl. My favorite vinyl to cut, especially the white, pull this back a little bit. This is white adhesive vinyl. This is Oracle 651. And the reason I like Oracle is because within the white, if you can see it, it's got a blue uh, piece of paper on the back. It's light blue. Some of the vinyls have a white backing, especially if you're using white, and it's really hard to see. 
when you're weeding because then you're what you're weeding white on white. I use a lot of white vinyl for the ornaments because I usually have them, you know, glittered with some bright color. You don't have to use white, but I do use a lot of white. So Oracle um, 651 is a permanent vinyl. And um, I do buy some Oracle. They have it um, at Michael's now. I also buy this online. And the other kind of vinyl that's my favorite vinyl um, for most part, for the most part, I use Oracle 651 in the white. But my favorite vinyl to use is called FDC. So it's Frank David Charlie FDC. And I get that from a company online called um, uh, specialty-graphics.com. And I buy FDC vinyl from there. And I use almost all that with the exception of the white because the FDC vinyl has a white background and it's really hard to weed the white. So I like the Oracle better, okay? There are some other vinyls out there you can try. I, I'm, I have tried a lot of the like Hobby Lobby vinyls, the Cricut vinyls, all that. I'm not super impressed with those. They do work. For ornaments, you're not gonna have to worry about them being washed or outside in the rain or anything like that. So they will probably work. But this vinyl also weeds the best that I've ever tried. And weeding is can be rather tedious if you have poor quality vinyl. So I probably tell you just to spend a little extra money and save yourself a lot of um, anxiety because <laughs> I learned that the hard way. So this weeds very, very well. So when I get to the weeding in a few minutes, you'll understand why. There, um, this particular design, I'll show it to you all cut out. So here's one that I cut out earlier. You can see there's a lot of little pieces on it, isn't there? And we have to remove all the extra. So you see, this is a whole piece. And we're gonna cut this out, but we gotta get all of the extra stuff off of this because this is what I want to put on the ornament. So if it is, um, if it doesn't weed well, it's very difficult. Okay. So again, sometimes you just have to spend a little extra money to get good vinyl, but they do have it. They have the Oracle at Michael's. They used to always have it in sheets, but I think I saw it in rolls when I was there the last time. And then I buy the F FDC vinyl in, um, from Specialty Graphics. So those are my two favorites. And actually the Brother vinyl that we have at the store is not terrible. I have used it. It is not permanent, however. But for the ornaments, it would work fine. Most permanent vinyl, as you can see, is kind of glossy. And I really like the glossy look when I'm doing ornaments because it makes it a little shinier looking. Um, the non-permanent vinyl is usually kind of matte, so it's not as pretty. So. Okay, so we're gonna put we're gonna start our cutting procedure here, but I want to show you a couple things on the screen that we have to do first. Okay, so first thing we gotta do where where my stick go? Here we go. We have to go find the pattern that we made. Remember we put it in there. What was the name and number again for vinyl? Oh, the number it's Oracle O R A C A L. And it's 651, that's the permanent vinyl. They have a 631 that is not permanent, but I use the 651 is what I like. I like glossy, so. Okay, so we need to go find that design that we just made by scanning. And to do that, it's gonna be retrieve data. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go find it in the machine. So here's my machine, and that's where I saved it. And it was number eight that I saved. It was M000008, so I'm gonna to touch that one. And then here's our little design that we pr produced. Okay, hopefully you can see it. My, sometimes my camera takes a second to focus, okay? And then I'm gonna click okay. So I've got it up on the screen, I'm gonna click okay. Now, I have some editing to do here because if I touch on this design, see how I'm getting just the little bits of it? Like if I touch here, if I very carefully touch there, see, I'm just getting little bits of it. Well, with my luck, if I try to move this, 
I will have pieces all over the place. I'm not too close. I'm just trying to get it to focus a little bit. Sometimes the when I put my hand in front of the screen, it doesn't want to focus away. So it's one of those camera things I haven't figured out yet. Okay. So I want to get the all of these pieces on this screen. I want to get them combined together into one design so that when I move it around, I'm not going to lose something. So I am going to go into edit. If you're on the CM 650s or the 550, there's a little button on the top right left hand corner up here that looks like um, a circle, a triangle, a little square, and it's like at the top. And that is your edit button. The new ones say edit. Thank you for putting words on it. I love words. <laughs> Oops, second here. Did you have so did you get to figure out the Oracle vinyl? What was the name? Okay, I think everybody got it. All right. Now what I need to do, and then and then it'll be the same way on the 650. There's a little button up here that set, has three squares, red squares. And we're gonna touch that because this is select. I'm gonna hit select. And then there's a couple of options. You can select to a, if I touch the first one, you can like, um, remember how we did the cropping? You can select to the crop, or in this case, I just want to select all. I want all of it selected so that it's all together in one piece. So I'm going to touch the second one that looks like the circle and the triangle. I'm just going to touch that one, and then see how on my screen everything's red. I got all these little red pieces over here. So that means it's all selected. And then I'm going to click OK. And after I get all of that done, I need to group this. So again, for those of you with the 650s, it's got that little editing buttons up here on the left. We're going to object edit on the, the newer machines. And then the buttons look the same on both machines. It's a, it's a little. Uh, circle triangle with a square and I'm going to touch this and then look what happened over here see I just have one red box around the whole thing so now it is grouped and they used to call it unify and um, you had to say yes after you touched it with the older machine so if you have a button that says yes now click yes then you're done but now we have this and see I can move it around on the screen and it's all in one piece so I don't have to worry about it falling apart on me when I go to cut it, okay? And I do apologize. I, I think it's a little blurry, but these new scan and cuts do not come out very well on camera. I've had a little more trouble. The old one, the screen comes out better. Okay, so I'm done with, the, um, with this part of the editing process because I want to unify it or I want to group it. The other thing that I need to do, this particular, let's look and see how big this thing is, because you know our ornament, put the ornament up here, our ornament is about three inches square, roughly. It's a little bit over three inches. So we need to make sure this is gonna fit on our ornament. And this goes with any ornament you're gonna do. You're gonna have to kind of measure your ornament and then decide how big your graphic needs to be, okay? So, to change the size, I'm going to touch the top button here. It's the square with the arrows. Okay. And right now, this design is a little over four inches square. So that's going to be too big for my ornament. So right now, it will. if I touch one of these, they'll come down together in aspect ratio. So I'm just going to touch the bottom, the width here, and I'm going to bring it down to three inches because I know that about three inches is where I want it. The top one's just slightly smaller, but that's fine. So it's about three inches square, okay? Then I'm gonna click okay. So we've got it grouped, we changed the size, and I'm gonna click okay one more time to get back to, this was that object edit screen where we select all and all that. Now I'm getting ready to cut this. So I'm going to click OK one more time. 
And I'm going to load my mat in here after I put my vinyl on. So give me a second. I'm going to move this back so you can see a little bit. So here is my standard mat. Now, when I cut vinyl, I use a standard mat. I'm going to take the plastic off. And when we cut when we cut the adhesive vinyl, you're going to cut with the vinyl side up. So there's like a paper on the back. That's going to be down on the mat. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to slip this vinyl on the mat. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'm going to press it down. If you have a, excuse me, just a second, I have to reach for something. If you have a mat that's not very sticky anymore, now this one's very sticky, so I'm not going to do this. There's these little brayers are wonderful tools that you can bray it, use the brayer and get it down on the mat harder. This one's, I just restuck this one, so it's really good. So I really love this little brayer. This is like my favorite tool. These are the little brother ones, so they work great. Second here. And I just stuck it down. Now when I, when I stick these on, I try to kind of stick them at least kind of like straight on the mat so I can know where it, approximately it is. But remember, this machine has a scanner in it. So let's pull this back. I'm going to lay this up again. I'm going to, I'm going to load it just like I did before. Let me pull the mat, the camera back. I'm going to bump it up against the rollers in between the little shoulders here. I'm going to lay my hand down on the mat, and then I'm, if I can reach it, <laughs> I'm going to touch the button with the other hand. And I'm going to guide the mat in. Okay? And just watch your hands. My fingers kind of stick there, so you just have to kind of watch when you load it. But holding your hand down and keeping it flat against the body of the machine really keeps it from doing the little sideways thing. With these mats, if they go sideways too many times, they're pretty much gone. So um, I did have to replace this mat. They had a little problem with the original mats that came out with this machine. So did you notice this one has a blue dot on the bottom? This is one of the newer mats. And I think what they did is I think the mat was just ever so slightly too wide. So it kind of pooped up in the center. And I think that's what, what was causing the loading problem. So I think they're just ever so slightly narrower now. And I did have to replace my original one. It did load okay, but all of a sudden, about a week or two ago, I noticed it just wouldn't load very well, and it was very difficult, so I finally just said, enough's enough. I'll just get a new mat, <laughs> so I did, okay? So we have this loaded, but we want to, I'm gonna pull this forward so that it won't hit my lamp. I want, to know, I need to know my designs right here, right? But I don't know exactly where my vinyl is. So I have this wonderful tool that's a scanner. On the older machines, it's going to be kind of over on the left-hand side. So I'm going to touch the scanner, and I'm just going to touch start. And I'm going to let the scan so that it can t show me where my vinyl is. Okay. All right. So I don't know if you can see it very well because it's white vinyl, but I can see it. It's kind of looks shows up kind of blue. Can you see? So here's my vinyl right up here, and here's my design. Well, obviously it's not on the vinyl. So I need to grab my design and I need to pull it up on the vinyl. Now I cut my vinyl. This this design is three inches. I did cut my vinyl four by four, just because I wanted to give myself plenty of room. You probably could get by with a little less to conserve it. But I, when I teach classes, I usually give everybody, you know, at least a little extra so that they're not worrying about getting it on there. So this was done but with four by four vinyl. I have the vinyl side up, the paper's down, and I know where it's at. So I've moved this and I'm gonna click okay. So the next step then is the actual cutting. So the first thing on this machine is you have to choose, I'm going to hit please select, and I can choose all the different options. The older machine is similar, but it kind of gives you two buttons that say cut or draw. So you're going to choose cut. I'm going to choose cut here. 
And then I have several options available underneath and it's telling me it's gonna take three minutes to cut. I have the pressure on one, the speed on three and the half cut is on. So we need to talk about these settings here. When you cut vinyl, you do not want it to cut all the way through the uh, vinyl to the mat. We want to cut it just the vinyl part. So we're going to half cut it. We're going to cut it only halfway. So if I touch my little toolbar or my little tool wrench, the first thing I've slowed down, the new machines are defaulted at like cut speed of five, which is pretty fast. I, I like three, so I move mine down to three. I left the, these two on auto, but what we're worried about is the half cut. It's on the second page. So I have my half cut turned on because I only wanted to cut halfway through the vinyl. But as I've been playing around with this machine, and I haven't cut a ton of vinyl until recently, I've always struggled a little bit with the new machine, with the half cut. And what I found, because what I was finding, if I left this on auto, the vinyl didn't always want to, it cut through, but it didn't weed real well. It was like, it was like mostly cut through, but it was a little bit on the scant side. And I need it to weed really well, especially with these very detailed pieces. So the other day when I was playing around, I started playing around with this half cut pressure setting. And what worked for my machine is I set it on one. And that seemed to work really well and it cut through the, the, the vinyl completely. Because remember, this machine has an auto blade. So it's gonna automatically set it for me. And, but, for me, the pressure was not quite hard enough. And so when I started changing this to one, it's really helped my vinyl a lot. So let's see how it works with, with it tonight. Um, every machine's gonna be a little different. You may have to experiment a little bit, um, but this worked well for me. Now, for those of you with the older machines, the CM, like the 650s and the 550s, you have to set your own blade. There's no half cut setting on that machine. So what I do is I leave my pressure on zero for the vinyl, and then I put my blade on the number two. Normally two works well. Sometimes I have to go down to one and a half or maybe up to two and a half. So you may have to do a test cut, and I'll show you where the test cut is. I did a lot more test cutting with my old machine because I had to set the blade settings myself. With the auto blade, I found I really don't need to test cut very much, okay? So I have my cut pressure, my half cut pressure on one. The half cut is turned on, and then we'll go back the page, and I did slow my cut speed down to three. I found that if I'm doing something very detailed like this, it works better to slow it down so that it's not, it's not running so fast, okay? And then I'm going to click OK, so I'm happy with those settings now. And then again, I can make sure that I'm happy with them because it shows me the settings right here. So I've got my pressure at one, my speed at three, and my half cut is on. Now, if you want to do a test cut, you would hit test at this point, and then it would give you the option of several different little um, shapes, and then it would just put it around somewhere where the design was not, and then it would do that first, cut that first before it cut the design. I've cut this several times now, so I know I'm pretty sure it's going to cut okay. So I think we're just going to go for it, okay? Because <laughs> you can see I cut several of them out as I've been working with the settings, and they're all cutting pretty nicely. I think I've got three or four of them here, okay? So they all cut pretty nicely. All right. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to hit start. And it says it's going to take three minutes to cut because it is a fairly detailed design, and I don't know if I can get any closer for you to see, but I'll try to keep it close so you can kind of see what it's doing. Now, so this is a good time for questions, if you have questions about some of the things we talked about on the machine while this is cutting. 
Now, do you notice, those of you with the older machines, how quiet this one is? It was, I, it was a huge thing. I, the first time I cut on them, I'm like, wow. <laughs> it was so quiet. So if you have people in the house with you, you don't have to worry about waking them up. But it is very quiet. So see this blade, this is the standard blade. I didn't take it out. So with the new ones, the standard blade is black and blade and blade holder. And then there's another one that we don't use very often. Um, for those of you with the older machine, you would use the teal colored um, blade holder with the standard blade. And like, again, I said, I set it on two normally for um, vinyl and the pressure is on zero. But I really love this auto blade. It is. I'm really getting used to it. I have. I have had to experiment a little bit with some of my stuff that I've cut in the past. It's a little different than the other machine. But once I figured out what settings work for me, it's been fine. It's getting about done. It says one minute. So any other questions, or if I put everybody to sleep. I'm the one that's sleepy, remember? <laughs> Oops, I got some comments here. Here we go. I have a 650 and I'm new to this. Is is there a special blade? No. Penny, the, the 650, that you, you need the teal blade, which is called the standard blade, and the standard blade holder, which is teal colored, and then that blade is the blade that goes in it. Oh, the, the specialty graphics is, is uh, F... DC, Frank, David, Charlie, FDC vinyl, that's my favorite. It's 40, 4,200, I think is the number. And then they have tons of colors. And I like it because you can buy like sheets of it. So if you want to try a whole bunch of colors, the sheets are, aren't that expensive. So I bought like a whole bunch of colors and just a sheet of it so I could try it out. And I really do like it. But my favorite white is still Oracle because it has the blue background. It's just easier to weed. So when I go to weed it, you'll see. Okay. Oh, so it's finished cutting. So we can hit oh, up here. Bring it up here so you can see. I'm going to click OK. All right. And then it would go back to cut it again if I wanted to cut it again. So we're not going to do that tonight. I'm going to go ahead and hit the mat button and I'm going to, to uh, eject my mat. And then I'm going to push my scan and cut back a little bit to get it out of my way. Okay. Oh, and by the way, this is like, like my favorite little tool. This is one of those little command hooks, those little teeny ones. And see what it does? It just works perfect. It's one of those real small ones, and it works perfect for the stick. So your little stylus, then I never, I, then I don't lose it, and the cats don't push it underneath the scanning kit all the time. So I have this hanging on, my, on the side of my scanning kit. Okay. So we need to remove this from the mat in order to weed it. This is my trick for removing things from mats. The best thing is not to just pull, because if you would just pull this off your mat, it might disturb what we've cut here. So the best thing to do is to turn the mat over upside down, and then I'm going to kind of go like this and see I've got my, my uh, vinyl there, and I'm gonna pull the mat away from the vinyl so my vinyl stays flat. So that way I didn't disturb anything that I've cut on here. You can kind of see where it's cut, okay? That way I didn't disturb anything. And as soon as I get done taking stuff off of this mat, I always like to get my plastic thing back on top of it because Jan has been known to ruin patterns and stuff because it gets stuck on the mat. So I always get that put away right away before I ruin something. Okay, now I'm going to have to scoot a little bit again with the camera because I'm going to show you one of my other favorite little tools that I have that I use when I weed vinyl. Um, I have to move my computer over though. All right. might be a little tricky. 